Hello, my name is Ian David Marsden. I'm a cartoonist, illustrator, and designer. You can see a lot of my work on my homepage at marsdenillustration.com. I also have Instagram and Facebook where you can see recent sketches and projects that I'm currently working on. Uh, I've worked for magazines and newspapers, advertising campaigns, uh, business clients all over the world. I created the mascot for the Ski World Championship 2003 in St. Moritz, and the thing you probably know me most for is that I drew the very first Google Doodles. Today I want to show you a little bit how I work. I work on a Wacom Cintiq 27QHD pen display, and I work in various software applications. Today I'm going to draw the sketch in Photoshop, and then I'm going to ink it as vector art in Adobe Illustrator. I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so now first I'm going to draw my pencil sketch or my roughs for what I'm about to illustrate. The idea I had for this little demonstration video was to have a big evil robot in the background. So that's what I'm sketching. I'm using uh, Kyle brushes a uh, Kyle brush pencil for this, which you can, uh, kylebrushes.com offers a bunch of different, very, I like them a lot anyway, very good brushes, brush presets for Adobe Photoshop, ranging from pens, pencils, inks, watercolor, gouache, and even half tones. They're divided into sets, so uh, you don't have to download things that you don't need. The pricing is very reasonable, I find. And if you want to start experimenting with them, they have a trial mega pack for, I think, 15 buckaroonies that uh, contains a selection of all of the different kinds of brushes. So here you can see I'm laying down the robot. It's a menacing robot, a highly muscular robot. I never quite understood why they build robots to be muscular since they're robots, but anyway, they look better that way. Uh, I'm going to make it an evil, sort of demon style, devilish kind of robot thing. And uh, I'm just sketching away here, trying to find the form a little bit, outlining it. It's, uh, my idea is that this uh, robot thing is kind of sort of sneaking up behind our main heroes who we're going to draw next, who are in the foreground. Okay, so you saw there I didn't like how the leg was, so I selected it, made it a little smaller, rotated it a bit. As you know, uh, on Wacom tablets or pen displays. You can also flip the pen around and use it as an eraser, which is very nice. Okay, here now on a second separate layer, I'm drawing the foreground characters. I'm choosing a slightly different color for the pencil so that I can differentiate the lines. Um, this is uh, a character in the foreground, his head, his arms. I want to get the pose right. He's going to be holding a little remote control, and he's looking at it, trying to figure out what it actually is and what it does. And the gag is, I guess, that it's activated the hideous robot behind him. I want him to be sitting in a comfy chair. Um, if I wanted to really work the scene out, I would probably put a fireplace in the background and make it look like... Uh, Downton Abbey or something like that, uh, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just concentrating on the characters. And next to him is his trusted dog, who is trying desperately to point out to him that something horrible is just about to happen. There now I'm going to play a little bit with the placement of the characters. And I'm going to fade him out. 
so that I can use them as a backdrop later for inking. Even later when I'm inking, of course, I can still reposition elements. Nothing is set in stone. But there, I'm kind of happy with the way that is. Okay, now I'm in Adobe Illustrator. And I'm bringing in a JPEG of the sketch that I just created in Photoshop. I'm going to place it on a layer. You could turn the layer into a template layer, which would dim it to 20 or 30%. But since I've already dimmed it in the JPEG, I don't even need to do that. Now I'm going to start inking. Uh, on the left in the menu, you see that I have various brushes and brush settings that I've already created. And here I'm also playing with a dynamic sketch tool from Astute Graphics, which are plugins for Photoshop that I can highly recommend. Of course, because this is Illustrator, it's vector art, and I can always select the Bezier points and pull them and change them as well. Although even in Illustrator, I like to draw relatively freehand with brushes that I've created based on calligraphic calligraphy brushes, which reflect the pressure sensitivity, speed, and angle of my stylus. And uh, I know some artists like to you know, pull the points on all of these. Of course you can, and there are many tools to do that, but I try to get it right uh, pretty much immediately with my brush, with my pen tool, because I want it to look more or less how it would if I had been drawing it on paper with a dip pen or a brush. Okay, so um, I'm laying down some more lines here as you can see. As you could also see by the way earlier, I cleaned up the overlap. What I did was I flattened um, the artwork and then I worked with the Pathfinder to trim and then I remove overlapping pieces. Uh, if that doesn't make any sense to you, then please uh, watch some other illustrated tutorials first on how to work with uh, paths and how to basically work with them. Uh, sorry if this is already a little more advanced. Okay, here now I'm using the pencil tool and I'm using it without a stroke but only with a fill, with a black fill. And basically I'm just drawing the shaded areas. Now, if I was doing this on paper, I would be doing this with a brush and India ink. And each individual, zig individual zigzag there would be a brush stroke. Now, since I have been doing this for many years, and even when I'm doing it with a brush, I know where I want those to be. So now, in my mind, I can just think about where I want them to be. And I can create them like this using the pencil tool. Um, you can see the outline. Uh, of course, in Illustrator, you can change the color of the outline as well to make it more visible. But I find this, you know, quite fast and super clean, of course, vector art. And if I don't like it, I can change it, as is always the case. Um, even here, even though this video is accelerated, a little bit to ensure that this video doesn't end up being an hour long. Um, it's as you can see I still work relatively fast. If this was a piece to be published or for an advertising campaign or something obviously I would spend considerably more time on it to make sure that everything is really exactly the way I want it. Still, you can see it's an efficient tool and things move along very nicely. Okay, so uh, there I've selected everything. And now I've gone ahead and finished the robot because you can see it is a symbol in my library. I can now change the colors. If I change the colors on one symbol, it changes it on all of the instances of the symbol. 
and uh, it being vector art I can of course scale it and it is lossless it doesn't have any pixels right now I'm starting on the heroes in the foreground again I want these to be relatively naturally drawn just as if I was drawing them with a brush and a pen and that's what I'm doing I'm using my brushes that I've basically just tweaked a little bit uh, from using a uh, calligraphy brush which picks up on the pressure sensitivity and the speed of my drawing now I'm drawing the chair and I'm just gonna clean up the chair now I flatten the chair and I'm gonna delete or erase the areas that are gonna be behind the character here too um, sometimes using a pathfinder sometimes just using the eraser tool I clean up the areas that I don't want to be there now I'm gonna draw his fingers the remote because I want it to be mechanical looking I'm pressing down shift to constrain the line to a straight line and again cleaning it up removing the overlapping pieces I'm adding a little bit of shading because these figures need to live in the same space the shaded robot behind the people here has quite a lot of shading now I'm going to add some detail to the whiskey glass clean it up with the eraser add a little label to the whiskey a little shading clean it up again I'm also going to add some details to this chair I want it to look like an antique chair I want it, like I said Downton Abbey I want this to look like uh, or Sherlock Holmes or an old mystery story so kind of an anachronism a old style detective looking at a remote control he's dressed in an old-fashioned way and then there's a horrible satanic robot showing up behind him maybe he ventured into a evil Tesla style castle or something like that this isn't actually from anything I created this entirely for this demonstration so it's basically just a fun piece right now he has a remote control here I'm rotating and duplicating a lightning bolt to indicate that he had pressed the button it's, uh, it's such an efficient tool both of course um, the Adobe tools and the Wacom Cintiq 27 QHD before I had a 21 UX which was excellent also and even before then I, w I worked with uh, Intuos tablets which I found to be excellent as well there's his dog and I pulled my print signature out of my symbol library now I'm just laying down some flat background colors I'm using orange so I can see what I'm doing I'm going to send the object behind the black line art again using the Bezier pen I'm just outlining this change the orange to white save it as a symbol and I'm going to add a stroke a white outline stroke to the people in the foreground and the dog to just lift them off from the robot there you go okay well that's my first little video that I'm doing here I hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions please post them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as quickly and as well as I can and uh, please share the video subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you again here real soon for my next video thanks for watching